Welcome back, everyone. So about a year ago, you saw me build this custom radiator for my boat-tailed speedster. And the good news now is that not only am I was able to get a little bit more work done on it, but I actually have the speedster out with me in California now. So I'll be able to get work done and start making videos again, hopefully pretty regularly. But anyways, what I'm doing here is finishing up some details that I didn't get to last time I worked on this. Uh, which is finishing up the fill port here. So you see I just cut a hole in the, the fill port there and then I'm gonna make a little cap that uh, will plug that up and we'll get this mounted onto the frame. And the real goal of this video is to figure out if this radiator is actually capable of keeping the engine cool. Because when I made it, I was working in some pretty tight constraints and the original radiator from the engine was too big. so. I ended up using the same core from that radiator, but I needed to shorten it and narrow it uh, pretty significantly. So it does have much less area now and less volume than it used to. And if it's not able to keep the engine cool, then that's obviously a really big problem. So the goal of this video is to figure that out and uh, hopefully it turns out well. So once I finished the fill ports there at the top of the radiator, I decided to move on to uh, the mounting provisions for it. And the original radiator had two steel side plates, which I kept, that were uh, fixed to each side of the radiator and they had their own mounting fixtures welded to those plates. And I kept the side plates, I was able to cut them down and just modify them a little bit to fit my smaller radiator now. And these parts that I'm cutting out of this one inch box tube, I'm going to cut and then bend around each other to form a couple little mounting tabs on each side of the radiator. And I'm going to TIG weld this to the steel side plates, but I'm going to do it in a way that looks like the original spot welds. So it'll kind of be um, the same sort of factory uh, style. So as you can see, the radiator sits pretty nicely onto the front cross member there, but there's a clearance issue between the engine fan and this outlet tube on the bottom tank of the radiator here. And I think in the last video when I made this radiator, I said that my plan was to actually just cut the tips down of the fan blades, but I'm really, really worried about losing that extra bit of, of cooling area of the fan and it won't pull as much air in, obviously, if I make the fan smaller. And because I'm so concerned about this not being able to keep the engine cool, I wanted to keep the full area of the fan there. 
And so I was able to do that here by just cutting out a notch on this bottom tube and forming this piece of copper to, to fit in there. And I'll just solder that back in and clean it up and that should give me enough clearance uh, that I don't need to modify the fan. So now that the radiator itself is pretty much complete, um, I need a way to support the top of the radiator. And so I could have just a bar running from the top of the radiator all the way back to the firewall, which is what you see most of the time. They'll have like a pair of struts coming from the each corner of the, the top of the radiator back to the firewall. Uh, but I didn't really have room to do that in a way that looked good, I thought. So I'm gonna make a couple diagonal struts that run from the top corners of the radiator down to the frame rails here. So you see I just welded this lug down on the frame rail here and I have these tie rods here that I made um, that has a little clevis on one side to fit onto that lug and then um, a, a similar um, fitting up at the top of the radiator. So with that, the cooling system is pretty much done. All I need to do is to fill it up with water and make sure all the hoses are nice and um, tightly connected, which means that the next thing in order to get the engine running is to get the fuel system hooked up. And I wanted to run this with a completed fuel system here um, just to have another thing checked off the list. And the gas tank that you saw me remove there is one that I made a while ago. If you scroll way back in the videos, you can find it. But I was never really that happy with it how, and how it turned out. Um, the welds on it were not very good and they had a lot of leaks that I had to try to um, plug at the time. And I just really wasn't confident that that was gonna hold up over time. So instead I bought this cylindrical fuel tank here. I think it's about nine and a half or 10 gallons. And uh, all it needed was a couple modifications to, to fit what I wanted to, it to do. Um, the inlet port here was actually in pretty much the exact right position, so that was really convenient. And all I'm doing here is just welding on the flange from my old tank so that I can use this same uh, fill port and gas cap that I had made previously. And so once that's all bolted on there with some um, gasoline compatible sealant, I took the fuel line here and I just drilled a hole in the frame next to the engine and then a hole back here and I'm running my fuel line uh, through the frame there so it's kind of hidden along most of its length there. 
And another thing I wanted to do was to use hard fuel line around all the visible parts that kind of run around the engine because I just don't like the look of that black fuel hose that people use to run up into their engine. I think the hard bent line looks much better. So I got this nice little brass union here that I'm using to replace the old fittings that were on this, this manifold here into the carburetors. And then for the fuel line here, I got this, I think, 3 8 tube of copper nickel. It's a copper nickel alloy that uh, people use for fuel lines, for brake lines, things like that. And with this nice little bender here, I was able to bend this up in exactly the right position that I wanted to sort of run from the carburetors and down along the intake manifold of the engine. And then that'll give a much cleaner look. And that nice new brass union fitting um, will give me a, a perfect seal up there by the carburetors. All right, so I'm just about ready to go with this thing. I've got the, all the fuel system plumbed in there. Fuel pump under the gas tank back there is wired in. The radiator is all hooked up here too. Even got a brand new correct hose here for, for that run there. My temporary ignition setup is all wired in back here. Just got my battery and solenoid there. I have it wired through um, this just auto zone switch right there. So I can turn this part way and you'll hear the fuel pump running, and then you can see the starter down there Like once I kick it on. So that is definitely all wired up. All that's left to do is throw some water in and some gas. So I didn't get it on video, but as soon as I turned the fuel pump on, it just started dumping gas out of uh, my fuel bowl here. And I couldn't understand why the seal was so bad. I, brought, I have a brand new O-ring and, and filter that came with this too. Um, but if I don't know if you can see the face of this here, like of the sealing surface, is super bent. I never noticed that before. You can see if I take this o-ring out like the bolt here is just completely rocking back and forth on that and yeah that's definitely not not even close to sealing even with the the gasket so i'll have to get another one of these but i'm just going to put in just a plastic filter for now and yeah i was way too impatient to go get a plastic fuel filter so i'm just splicing it together with this straight piece of line here uh, but i just need to tighten up the hose clamps here and then we'll be finally ready for the moment of truth. <laughs> 
Alright, so as you saw, I had it running there at a pretty good idle for a little over 20 minutes. And the temperature leveled right out at around 170 to 175 degrees Fahrenheit, which is actually pretty much the perfect temperature for this engine to stay at. And this is really just such a weight off my shoulders. Ever since I made this radiator a year ago, I've been super worried about it not having enough uh, area there to keep the engine cool because I had to shorten and narrow the core by it so much that it's now much smaller than uh, what this engine originally ran with. And if it wasn't able to keep it cool, then I obviously would have had a much bigger problem and I would have had to kind of get creative with things. But I don't have to worry about that now because it actually does work. And the even better part is no leaks under here anywhere. So all the soldering I did here on these tanks and all the leaks that I plugged uh, when I was finishing it up seem to have uh, stayed plugged, which is awesome. There's a couple little things left to do, um, like solder on these side plates here to both sides. The water that was leaking out of here was coming from uh, this little hole uh, right there. You see, that's sort of like a pressure relief hole, uh, but there was just some, just a little bit too much uh, air volume in here, so that was expanding and pushing some water out. It stopped though once it got to the the correct uh, volume there. You, you can still see, you can well, maybe you can't, but there's still water down in there. That was just falling out here and hitting the fan and getting flung over to the wheel. But it seems like it's sort of uh, figured out the correct volume by itself of water that it wants in there. So that's great. You saw after I turned the ignition off, the engine actually continued to sort of sputter and, and run for a little bit. There's a few different things that kind of caused that. There was probably a little bit of residual pressure in the fuel lines, so it was still sucking in a little bit of fuel and then something hot in the cylinder or in the combustion chamber, like a glowing spark plug or something like that, was still igniting that fuel a little bit after I turned the ignition off. So the spark plugs definitely were not firing, but it was still sort of um, igniting the fuel under just under the heat and compression. So I do still plan to do a proper rebuild on this engine pretty soon, so I'm not really worried about trying to tune that out at this point. Um, but once, once I get into the engine later, then uh, we'll fix all sorts of stuff like that. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Um, next thing, we'll be finishing up some of those things I mentioned there. Uh, I've been working, starting to work on some of the wiring there too. Um, and then I might get into some big systems next, like the hooking up the brakes, engine rebuild. Um, but yeah, it's great to be back and it's great to be making videos again. So I will see you all next time.